everyone and welcome back. We have got an absolutely Bobby Dazzler screencast for you today. Hopefully that you agree with me as well. It's on rounding to units and decimal places. And the great thing about rounding is it's one of these topics that once you learn the skills, you've got all the skills to pay those bills because the technique stays the same every single time. So what is rounding? Now, rounding is basically when we make small changes to a number to make it easier to use. Examples of that might be you're working something out on your calculator, like a fraction, and you have an answer that has, you know, let's say six or seven or eight numbers after decimal place on your calculator, and you're told to round it to two decimal places. That's the type of thing that we're going to use all the time in maths. So it's really important that we need to know how to do it. It is like these are woodworking tools if you don't know what they are and they are literally there just to shave off a little bit of wood, not to cut the wood in half, but just to round off those sharp edges and that's what we are doing with rounding. You need to make sure that the answer that you give is of a similar value to the question or the number that you start with. If it isn't, it's it's wrong. And it's a real key concept that people, some people make a mistake on. Is let's say let's say they have a thousand pounds and they're told to round it and they end up with one pound, that should send alarm bells ringing in your brain. So make sure that the answer that you give is similar to the answer that to the question that you're given. It's obviously going to be worth a little bit less or a little bit more, but it's not going to be dramatically out of kilter. Hopefully that makes some sense. And as we go through, hopefully that'll continue to make sense. Not so much in this screencast, but in, in future screencasts about rounding to significant figures and things like that. So let's have a look at um, a number. So we've got 32.538569. And today we're talking about rounding to the nearest unit or rounding to decimal places. And these are all decimal numbers because they're after the decimal. This is the units column because this is the first unit, okay? Or the nearest whole number. Same thing. So decimal places, the position of the digit to the right of the decimal. So here we go, here's decimal. All of these are decimal places. <clears throat> and the nearest unit. So round to the nearest unit means to find the nearest integer. Integer? Yeah, to any given number. Basically, you have to get rid of the decimal part. So we're getting rid of all of these numbers here. So nearest unit, okay, and decimal numbers. So let's have a look at rounding the following numbers to one decimal place. And all that means is, is that our answer is going to have one number after decimal. So we can see here, here's the decimal and we're identifying this number here. See, one decimal place. We're identifying this number. Now, the way that we do that is very simple. We column it. So we put that number in between two lines. Now, the rule with rounding is this, and this is where it's um, pretty amazing, really, is all the numbers before the column will stay the same. Now, there is one or two times where this isn't the case but in the on the whole they always stay the same so you can start with that so we're just going to keep those numbers the same all the numbers after the decimal place will always turn into zero zeros so let's do that now it's only the number in the column that will either stay the same or go up in value by one so it all comes down to this number. So if this number here is five or more, so five, six, seven, eight, or nine, this number is going to go up because we round up. If this number is four, three, two, or one, then this number stays the same. And this number here is two. So guess what's going to happen to this number? It's going to stay the same. Now, this is where some people find the next part difficult. If I say to you, okay, my answer is 132.5000. Would I write the zeros? And the answer on this occasion is no, because the value does not change whether I write the zeros or I don't write the zeros. 
Now, this is not going to be important today, but when we move through rounding, never cross off a zero if it dramatically changes the value of your answer. So these do not change the value of my answer. So I can say my answer is 132.5. Remember, we're rounding the following number to one decimal place. We've got that decimal place there. We've got one number after decimal. All right, I'm going to do one more with you here. And then I'm going to let you loose on the next slide. So here goes our number, 89.38652. So we're going to round it to one decimal place. So let's column the number that's in that area, which is the first number after the decimal place. So let's identify it and let's column it. Now remember, the process stays the same all the time. So what's the first part of the process? All the numbers in front of the column stay the same. So let's do that now. We've got 89 point. All the numbers after the column turn into zeros. Now what happens to the number inside the column? Remember it can either stay the same or go up by one. Will this one go up by one or will it stay the same? Depends on is this number here, is this five or more? And the answer is yes. So the number in the column will then change into four. And I can get rid of these zeros because it doesn't change the value of my answer. 89.4 is the same value as 89.400000. So I can get rid of those zeros. Okie dokie everyone, this time we're going to go two decimal places. So I'm going to help you out, but then I'm going to let you loose on it. Let's identify and let's column. Now what I'd like you to do from here is, I'd like you to do the rest yourself. Even if you get this wrong, it does not matter. In fact, if you get it wrong, sometimes it's the best thing that's going to happen to you today, because you're really going to focus on what you need to know. But give it a go, come back and see if you've got it right. I think you will, I think you're going to be fine. So step one, everyone, is to make sure all the numbers before the column stay the same. So let's write those now. I've got 132.5. All the numbers after the column turn into zeros. And the number in the column either stays the same or goes up in value by one. This number here is three, so the number will stay the same. And I can get rid of those zeros because it does not change the value of my answer. My answer is 132.52. So you can see here, the only difference between the first group of questions is the number that we identify in column. And this is the great thing about rounding. We will never change that system. It's only about the number that we identify and the number that we column, that we column because the system stays the same. Numbers before the column stay the same. Numbers after the column turn into zeros. The number in the column is the only number that will change. So let's give the next one a go. I'm not going to do any more for you. You're going to do the rest yourself. Pause the video now. Give it a go. Come back and see if you've got it right. So let's identify the number now. The number we're, going to, we're, going to, we're rounding is that number there, the 8. So we're going to column it. All the numbers before the column stay the same. <clears throat> so we've got 89.3. All of the numbers after the column turn into zero. So let's do that now. The number in the column will go up by one because that number there is six. It's a terrible arrow, Mr. Warren. So it's going to go up by one. Our answer is 89.39. Okay, so now we're working on the nearest whole number. As I promised you, the process stays the same. It's just the number that we identify changes. So I'm going to do the first one for you so you get the idea. Then you're going to do the next ones on your own. I'm going to identify the nearest whole number. And the nearest whole number is 2. I'm going to column it. And I want you to do the rest. Step one, numbers before the column stay the same. So let's do that now. The numbers after the column turn into zeros. So let's do that now. 
and the number in the column is either going to go up by one or stay the same. And because this number here is five or more, it's going to go up by one. So my answer is 133 and I can get rid of those zeros because it does not change the value of my answer. On the next one, I want you to pause the video, give it a go, come back and see if you've got it right. Here we go everyone, we're going to identify the nearest whole number. We're going to column that now. Numbers before the column stay the same. Numbers after the column turn into zeros. The number in the column is going to stay the same or go up by one and this number here is three. So therefore it's going to stay the same. Now I am going to go through when this may change. So let's say this, this one here, this here is no longer a three, it's a five. Now this number here is going to go up by the value of one. So it's going to push this 9 to make this 10. So therefore, your answer would have been 90. I hope that you can understand that. Don't worry about it too much. The more questions you do in class, the more of those you'll get and the better you'll get at coping with those. Please stick to the structure as we go through and remember your answer is 89 point nothing rather than 89.0000 because they don't have any value. Okay, everyone, it is time for the quiz. Make sure you only do the quiz if you feel really confident. If you don't feel confident, go back and watch this video from the start again, but I'm sure you will. Round all of these. The first one's rounding to one decimal place, second one's rounding to two decimal places, and the third one is rounding to the nearest whole number. Spot why that last question is interesting. It's to test you. Pause the video, give this a go, come back and see if you've got it correct. All right, everyone, let's have a little look-see at our answers, and there we go. We rounded this, this stayed the same, didn't it? We rounded this, this went, this went up. We rounded this one, and that was the great example of this one went up. So my answer was 60 point, obviously nothing, because I got rid of those zeros there. Hopefully you got those correct, that little curveball didn't throw you too much. As always, make sure you write yourself a great revision card or get in contact with me via the comment section below if you'd like electronic copies of all of these uh, revision cards for you to make it nice and easy. As always, I've enjoyed myself and I hope you have too and it's always a pleasure helping you with your maths today. <laughs>